Um, so what do you think the church can do? Like, what do you think they need from the church within the parishes, um, within the youth groups? Like what are concrete things the church can do to minister to them, to accompany them with truth and love? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think one thing too, well, I, I, a few things. I think one is um, naming that this is in the pews. You know, I think so often it, because there's so much at stake in broader culture, right, that it can be really easy. Like I, the vast majority of times I've heard this mentioned in a homily, if ever, but I have. It's usually about something going on outside the church walls. Right. Yeah. And so if you're a young person, you can start to think that if this is your story, then you just belong outside the church walls. No one knows you're here. <laughs> um, And so to recognize, I mean, something as simple as like, I mean, if you're a youth minister watching this and you're like giving a normal keynote talk about all the things people wrestle with in life, just put this one on the list, add it to the list. Like it'll take you an extra two seconds. And I guarantee you are going to have youth in that room that are like pierced to the heart because you saw them. (laughs) Right. And it takes two seconds. So I think that would be one, just like mention it more. Um, I think another thing, too, is um, to educate yourselves, you know, um, to there again, like Jason's putting resources in the show notes, like know, know what's out there, know what's out there for pastoral care. The truth is, I think as we're continuing to move forward in this <laughs> world of ours, we all if we don't already all know someone personally, we will before we pass on from this life. You know, we're, yeah. there's going to be someone in our lives. And so. Uh, to read up on this stuff, to have a sense of it, right? Because if if we're all, um, as church, we're all family, right? If we're all the family of God together, like this is your brother, this is your sister, maybe literally, biologically, your brother, your sister, but if not that, then spiritually. Um, And so to to know that, to know some of these stories, to know some of these resources, um, to be able to uh, to recommend, right? and I think one, a third thing I would say, um, I heard this in a, in a talk once, so I'm kind of copping it, but, um, uh, it was, uh, from, it, it was a, a, a Protestant psychologist who was telling this story of how, um, this call that like this call to chastity for all of us in a variety of ways, like is a costly obedience, right? Like Jason, you have eight kids. I mean, your obedience to chastity into your family, I'm sure has cost you a lot of sleep over the years. It's cost you a lot of stress, right? There's costly obedience in every state of life. Um, But this sense that like your costly obedience is my costly obedience, right? How can we share in each other's burdens? And he gave an example of a story of a friend of his who was single for the Lord, largely in because of this experience. Um, This woman was in her forties, single for the Lord. And he said to her, like, how can I be there for you? Like kind of this, he's like, oh yeah, costly obedience. I'm going to do it. He said, how can I be there for you? What can I do? And she said, "Um, invite me on your family vacations. She didn't have a family to go on vacation with, right? Um, And so that that sense of like your costly obedience is my costly obedience. If you have someone in your life who's striving for the gospel in this way, Ask them how you can be there for them, right? To to discern that together, and and I hope they're discerning that for you too. Like my best, a lot of my best friends are married now, and Aunt Anna in the house, you know. Like there's more I'm able to do to like be present with their family, and than I could maybe in, in a different state of life. And so um, that we can discern that together, right? Um, and I think if if people in the church can see that, can see that we're here for each other in really concrete ways of love. Um, there's less temptation to leave for the secular community, right? Because you're actually experiencing it in real time in a church. Yeah. I remember reading recently, someone said that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is human connection. 